Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about Candida albicans. Candida albicans is yeast. Where does it start in the body? It starts in the small intestine. The small intestine in face mapping is this part of the face here. And this is the area that you're going to feel if you have Candida albicans and you grab a towel and you run your hand across that textured towel, what that feels like is what candida feels like. It's not those larger white little congested bumps. It feels like a, a towel, a dry towel when you rub your hand across it. It's a little bit rough, tiny, tiny little bumps. And, um, and that's what it feels like. This is the best way to, to, to kind of get used to the feeling of what candida feels like. Candida, often you get candida albicans from taking antibiotics. So if you've been on antibiotics, even in the last five years, a lot of people have candida and they don't even know it. Having candida does not make you sick. It doesn't, um, it doesn't, you know, it's, you can still get up and go to work. You can still live life. But what it does is it makes life a little bit more difficult. It makes it a struggle to get up in the morning. It makes you feel more tired. It makes you feel lethargic. It also affects your memory. So it's just affects you like this. This is what Candida albicans does. It does not make you sick. What are the foods that you need to go off if you feel you have Candida? And Candida affects every opening of the body. It affects the, the mouth, the nose, the ear, and obviously the vagina. So um, what happens? You can get a white coating on your tongue and that can show you have candida. Um, it can affect your nasal area, your nasal area, and you you can get congestion and just be just feel congested here. You can it can affect your ears, and you can have um, sometimes just feel like your ears are blocked, or it um, you can have a light a dull ache in your ear, and obviously you can get vaginal thrush, which is very very common. So. Candida albicans is something that usually comes about from taking antibiotics and it means that maybe you had antibiotics five years ago. Um, it can be in the, 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 the body and just stay there and, and a lot of people have it and they're not even aware of it but it does just make life more of a struggle and it does affect your skin. So what are the foods you need to go off if you are um, and you believe you have Candida albicans? They can do a blood test and you can get checked to see if you have Candida in your body and they do that through looking at the blood. So um, the foods that you need to go off if you have Candida albicans is your baker's yeast. So that is anything that rises. That's going to be breads that rise. It's going to be cakes cookies, anything that has baker's yeast. Baker's yeast is also very high in beer. If you like to drink beer, um, that is very high in um, baker's yeast. It also, um, candida, another food that you need to stay off for candida is cheese and mushrooms. It's the mold foods. Um, it's melons, it's watermelon, cantaloupe, um, rock melon, I don't know what you call it over here. Oh, anyway, um, you know those melons, okay? Um, so that's another one that you should stay off. And um, it's, your, it's wine and vinegar, it's your fermented. So, you know, a lot of your salad dressings, you need to maybe make your own with a little olive oil and lemon juice. Um, but your fermenteds are not good either. So that's gonna be in some of your sauces, your soy sauce, some of these things are not gonna be good for candida. So those are the foods, your cheese, your mushrooms, your baker's yeast, breads and cakes and beer, your fermented, your vinegars, um, your salad dressings, your uh, wines, these things, you, you have to stay off your melons. And if you have a little bit of KP on the backs of your arm, the keratosis pilaris, or a little bit here on the sides of the face down here, which is often where it comes up, it, um, that, mean, that means you're sensitive to sugar. So if you look up a lot about candida, it will say stay away from sugar. Now, if you feel that you have candida, and it again is these tiny little bumps, um, if you have that, you have to stay off those foods for a minimum of two months to three months, 100%. It's not like a diet, you know, if you go on a diet and you cheat a little bit. Um, this one here, to get rid of it and to get it out of your body without taking any medications, because if you take medications for candida, it's gonna come back. 
Um, you want to not band-aid it, you want to get rid of it completely and you have to go on the diet. Stay away from those foods just for two to three months and you'll get it out of your body and you'll feel great. It's such a, a great thing when you, um, I've had candida so I know I have gone on the diet it really made me a pillow hugger. You know, I, it was really hard for me to get up in the mornings. And, um, and it just, it makes you tired. It makes you feel lethargic. So it's such a blessing when you can get it out of your body and do it naturally just by going off those foods. So that's my Candida Albican tip for you guys today. I want you all grab a dry, washcloth or a towel and just run your hand across it gently that's what candida feels like so for you Estes out there you know um, you know what it what it feels like for you non Estes um, you've got some good information here um, to follow through so this appears in this part of the face small intestine that's where you're going to feel your, your candida albicans so uh, enjoy and I'll be back to see you soon bye <laughs>